Thomas Tolkar. So, young man, you heard me ask, is Jamal here? All right, good job. And I saw Jamal come in. Come here, Jamal. Amen. 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 Amen.
we give honor this morning to the one who said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will grow. Yes, and he's certain because he is truly present this morning. Here at the Valley Grove Church, we give honor to our man and woman of God, the visionary and visionary of the Lord of the and to each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is good to be here on this Easter Resurrection Sunday morning. Look at, look at the person next to you and say, Label, it's good to see you. Now look back at him and say, Label, it's good to be seen. Will you bow me for a brief prayer? Proud Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these here, your people, God. Lord, we invite you into this place this morning. And Father, we ask that you would just move in a special way. Father, touch lives that need to be touched. Father, touch hearts that need to be healed. Father, we ask that you would save souls that need to be saved. Father, right now, we just come right now asking that you would intervene this morning, Father. Lord, we can't do nothing until you come, Father. Father, we cannot pray until you come. Lord, we cannot preach until you come. Father, we cannot give songs of Zion until you come. And Father, right now, we're just waiting on until you come, Father. Lord, we pray that you will bless this word that has been prepared. Father, do not let it fall on their fears, Father. We ask that you will send it, uh, accompany us with it and send it out to do, Father. We'll give you all the praise and all the honor. Of course, in your Son, Christ Jesus' name, do we pray that every heart agree by saying, Amen. 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 There is a word from the Lord this morning. I know many of you have your dinners already ready, so I'm going to say my little Easter speech and get out your way. If you, will, if you will, come with me to the book of Luke, the 13th chapter. Luke, 13th chapter. Again, reading at verse 10. Luke, the 13th chapter. Again, reading at verse 10. When you find me, you say amen. I'll be reading from the New International Version, and it reads on this wise. On a Sabbath, Jesus was in one of the synagogues. He was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. I want to put emphasis on the 11th verse. And a woman was there who had been crippled by spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. For the moment it is ours to share together this morning, I want to talk from the subject, bent but not broken. All right now. Bent but not broken. If you will, just talk to yourself this morning and say, self, I may be a little bent, but I'm not broken. I don't have any habit folks this morning. I may be a little bent, but I'm not broken. If we would be honest with ourselves this morning, some of us have been bent physically. Some of us have been bent financially. And yes, some of us have been even bent spiritually. But it's by the divine grace and the miraculous mercy of God that you may have been bent a little, but you did not move. Right, uh, this book of Luke was written by Luke, who was a doctor. Uh, Luke was a Greek. Luke was con considered to be what they called a Gentile Christian. Luke was a close friend and a companion of the great Paul. His purpose of writing this book was to present an accurate account of Christ, of the life of Christ, and to present Christ as the perfect human and the perfect Savior. 
He originally wrote this book to Theophilus and the Gentiles. The book of Luke was written around the AD year of 60 while Luke was in Rome. A few things this morning that I want to point out is Jesus Christ. Somebody shout Jesus Christ. And Luke, Jesus is displayed as the perfect example of how humans should live. Luke describes how G God's sons enter into human history. Jesus should be the leader of each and every one of our lives. Jesus gives forgiveness to each and every one that believes in him. The next thing this morning I want to bring to your attention is history. Somebody shout history. Luke was a medical doctor and Luke was also a historian. Luke connects Jesus to numerous events and people in history. Somebody shout history. Luke gives us confirmation that we can believe that Jesus is God. The next thing that I want to bring to your attention this morning is people. Somebody shout people. In Luke, Jesus shows deep concern for all of his followers. The love that God has for every individual is good news for each and every one of us. I want to stop this morning and say that Jesus loves you, children. So even when you feel that nobody loves you, you must remember that Jesus loves you. Now, through the years, the Lord has been good to us. Down through the years, the Lord has been good to us. If the truth be told, he's been better than good. He's been more than good. I don't know about you all, but he has been magnanimous. He's been magnificent. He's been gracious. He's been superior. He's been perfect. He has been everything in my life. I don't know about you all, but he has been good to me all of my life. Even when I did not deserve it, the Lord has been good to me. Has he been good to you? I don't know about you all this morning. Has he been good to anybody else in the valley road? If he has been good to you, I'll be standing on your feet giving God a way of prayer. If you can't stand up, you are just waiting. You know, man, I used to hear the old say, if I could say, Son of man died for the sins of all of humanity. 
A man that was believed to be perfect in his 33 years of living died for the sins of you and I. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. They buried him on a Friday, but it didn't stop them because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Is that good news to you this morning? Here in our text, here is Jesus, and Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. While Jesus is there doing his duty, there is a woman there. This woman who had been put in a situation that she did not want to be in. This woman was placed in a predicament with a purpose. This woman was placed in a predicament with a purpose. Sometimes in life we will go through things that possibly do not make sense to us. But I come to tell you this morning, children of God, that it is for a reason. You may be wondering why you're going through so much turmoil, problems on your job, problems at home, problems in your finances, problems in your health, problems, problems, problems. But I showed up to remind you this morning, children of God, that trouble don't last always. Sooner or later, things will start to turn into your favor. You have to believe that. You have to start speaking things into existence. Because how many know that there's power in the tongue? If you speak like you shall live. If you continue to look to the hills from which come our help, because truth of God, all of our help, it comes from the Lord. This woman who had been crippled by Satan. He was, she was crippled by Satan. This condition lasted for 18 years. Can you see it this morning? This woman was in the same condition for 18 years, but catch this, but she was still going to church. This woman was crippled for 18 years. Y'all know how it's how long 18 years is, but she was still going to church. Some of us deal with trouble for 18 days and we stop going to church. She did not allow what she was going through to stop her to get to the church. I know we all go through things in life, but do not allow what you're going through to stop you from getting to the church. Because there may be a blessing waiting on you when you get to the house of God. This woman in our text this morning was placed in a situation that looked like it would not get better. But by her continuously getting to the place of worship, by her continuously getting to the center, by her continuously going to church, she was positioning herself to be blessed. All right. Children of God, sometimes you just have to position yourself to be blessed. Sometimes you have to set your own self up. Sometimes you have to go to Adam and go catch yourself in something. Because sometimes you have to assist yourself to get it where you want to be. God is getting ready. He is ready. He's already ready to deliver you for whatever you may be going through. But first, you have to position yourself. In other words, get the church. In other words, pray on your knees. This woman continued to get the church. But on this particular day, well, there was a man by the name of Jesus. He was at church as well. Verse 12 says, when Jesus saw her, he called her forward. Which brings me to my first point this morning. My first thing I want to tell you this morning, children of God, Jesus sees you. All right. See how y'all happy. Jesus sees you. Isn't it comforting in knowing that Jesus sees you? When people look over you as if you're not there, Jesus sees you. All of your struggles, all of your hurt, all of your pain, Jesus sees you. Children of God, Jesus sees you and he knows exactly what you need. Don't you give up on God because God won't give up on you. He will step in right on time. I tell people all the time, I grew up in the microwave and the air fryer generation. Meaning we want everything at the snap of the But I, I, I didn't come out that generation. I grew up in that generation, but I'm not like that. 
Sometimes I like my food cooked on the stove. I don't mind how to get it because I know when food is cooked on the stove, it has its fullest potential. In my imagination, when it's microwave, when it's air fried, it does not reach its full potential. And sometimes so we got God is like that. We cannot have it the microwave way. Sometimes we gotta have it the air fryer way. Sometimes we gotta stick it in the hood. Sometimes we have to wait a little longer in order to get what God has for us. This woman, this woman, I like this woman, I tell you, because she was crippled for 18 years, but yet she's still in church. What indicates to me, Bishop, is that even though she was placed in a tough predicament, catch this, Mr. Brown, catch this, she didn't lose her faith. She had been placed in this predicament for 18 years, but she did not lose. Faith. That's something I want to drop on you this morning. It may not look good right now, but you God, don't you lose your faith. Don't you give up hope. Don't you throw in the towel. You have to have faith that things will get better. I don't know how long it will take, but by faith, by faith, things will get better. Don't you out this week by saying, by faith. When negativity comes in your mind, just say, by faith. When your children won't do right, just say, by faith. When bills are coming in, just say, by faith. When you lose friends, when you lose loved ones, just say, by faith. The doctor said it's not looking good right now, but by faith. Just look at somebody and say, by faith. By faith. And Jesus is about to do something in her life that could nobody do in 18 years. Jesus is about to do a miraculous thing in this woman's life, but just in a matter of seconds. This woman, she was eight, she was a uh, crew for 18 years. I'm sure that she went to see all kinds of doctors. She went to see Dr. Field, Dr. Lemon, Dr. Thompson. I don't know the doctors she went to see. They could not heal this woman. But this time, she's not in Dr. Levin's office. This time, she's in Dr. Jesus' office. And Dr. Jesus is about to do something miraculous in this woman's life. I come to tell you, if you quit going to all these doctors that got these degrees from Morehouse and from Clark and all these great schools, you get the Dr. Jesus how she's going to do something miraculous in it that can't nobody else. In verse 12, Jesus says, Woman! Woman! You are set free from your infirmity. In King James re re uh, Version, it reads, Woman, thou art loose from thy hand. Jesus sees you. But not only does Jesus see you, my second point this morning is that Jesus will set you free. Y'all going to shout, Jesus will set you free. Whatever you're going through, Jesus has the power to set you free. You can be set free this morning. If you believe that you can be set free this morning, I want you to stand up very quickly. Just stand up this morning. If you got that faith that you can be set free this morning, just shake off what's been holding you. Shake off the pressure. Shake off envious and jealous people. Shake off fun and angry family members. Shake off different authority. Shake off generation person. Shake off the attack that Satan has on your life. Just look at somebody and say, shake off. Yeah. 
he just never heard. But sometimes you just gotta, you gotta pray to God before he goes to say I don't know when it's gonna happen, but I'm gonna give God praise anyhow for some great things that he's about to do in my life. Because my man children of God, let me know that when bless when praises go up. Blessings real come back. There were ignorant people that witnessed to Jesus healing this woman. They were considering Jesus healing this woman to be an act of the world. Then Jesus calls them hypocrites due to the fact that if their oxes and if their donkeys were urged on the Sabbath day, they would take and give them more. But why can't this woman be healed on the Sabbath day? So I want to tell you this morning, everybody around you won't be happy when God starts blessing you. So you have to be careful who you hang around because everybody's not with the blessing that God has a story about. Everybody won't be excited because you're about to be set free for what Satan has kept you bound. I don't have time to deal with the whole text this morning, but I discovered that this woman, that I discovered that Jesus healed this woman. But can I tell you, as I get ready to leave you, Jesus healed this woman. She's been crippled for 18 years. But this is not in the text. This is just my spiritual imagination. Jesus healed this woman. She was at church. Jesus healed this woman after 18 years. Mm -hmm. Catch this. Watch this. Jesus healed this woman, but she didn't even ask for it. <laughs> Jesus healed this woman, but she did not even ask for it. Children of God, there's some blessings on the way that you did not even ask for. Sometimes God will just hook you up and say,
Is it now standing? Thank you for what you've done throughout this worship experience. Thank you, God, for this man who spoke to us by the wayside. Many times, all of us have been bent, but we prove that we're not broken. By being in this place today, all of us been through something. But we are in the right place. Thank you for being in the house on the Lord's day. And Lord, as we leave, we speak life into some individual today. And they began to walk a new way of life. We know the pandemic moved us to one side. But that was in their ears an awakening, God. You is the God of the pandemic. You saw what through thus far. We have no doubt that you're going to carry us further on up the road. We look to be at the offense of our faith. And we claim victory in all of our lives. We love you, Lord. We praise you for the gifts that we will receive by way of offering and tithes. And as we disembark, we said, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, will rest and rule with us now, his hope and forevermore, the people of God said, Amen, Amen and good morning to all of you.